morning broadcast here at Christ Baptist Church. I'm Reverend Lawrence E. Robertson, the pastor of Christ Baptist Church, located here at 4700 East 7th Avenue, Gary, Indiana. I'm grateful to God that you're able to join with us this morning. And we, we ask that you follow us on Facebook and follow us and like us, hit the like button and share this service with your friends and your family. I thank God for Brother Paul Kaiser and his wife, Keisha Kaiser, making this broadcast available to you. I'm grateful to God for our music director, Chris Sims, who is here with us this morning to play music of inspiration. Our percussionist, Marcus Carter, is accompanying him. I'm grateful to God that he has allowed us to see another sunshiny day. It's good to be in the house of God one more time. Amen? Amen. And as we always do, we start our broadcast with a moment of prayer. Won't you bow in prayer with me? Oh, gracious and merciful Father, eternal God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. We thank you, God, for watching over us last night. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger this past week. Father, we can't thank you enough. If we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. You are mighty good God, and you do such wonderful things. And we're thankful and grateful for all the wonderful things that you've done, all the wonderful things that you're doing, and all the wonderful things that you're going to do. Father, we can't thank you enough. We especially thank you for this morning, touching with your finger of love and waking us, starting us on our way in this a brand new day. We thank you for this day, and we ask that you go with us today. Go ahead of us and go before us. Make a way for us today. And now, Lord, we pray and we ask that all that's said and done in this service be pleasing in your sight. This is our prayer. We're your children and you're our Father. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now let us prepare to go into the worship as we have music of inspiration as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth.
mighty God we serve. I thank God for our music ministry. Amen. Amen. This past week, after much prayer and meditation, after seeing all that's going on around us, I asked the Lord to give me a word, give me a word that would be present for today's present time, that would be relevant for today. Walking around and looking around, seeing so many people wanting to get the vaccine, so many people young and old, black and white from all walks of life. The Lord led me to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, where we will be reading verses 45 through 51. I would ask that in your quiet time at home, read the entire chapter of Mark's Gospel, chapter 6. Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 45 through 51. And those who are here with us today, if you're able to stand, let us rest to our feet for the reading of God's word. Mark's Gospel, chapter 6. And I'm reading the New International Version, beginning at verse 45. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake and he was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them walking on the lake he was about to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Verse 51 reads, then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. They were completely amazed. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. I want us in this passage of scripture to lock in on verse 45. I want you to read the entire passage at home in your quiet time. It leads up and gives us the context of where we are in verses 45 through 51. But in verse 45, the Bible says immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. Jesus made his disciples get in the boat. Later on, that boat would be in a storm. Later on, that boat would be tossed and turned with the waves of the storm. But Jesus made them get in the boat. Jesus put them in that situation. And I want you to know that every now and then, the Lord will put you in a situation to get your attention. He'll put you in a situation to make you work together. He'll put us in a situation to see whether our hearts will change or will our hearts become hardened. God, he made the children of Israel wander in the wilderness for 40 years. God will put you in a situation. And this morning, after seeing that Jesus made them get on that boat, I want to preach and teach from the subject title, we are all in this together. We're all in this together. Won't you bow in a moment of prayer? Oh, gracious God in heaven, thank you. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to serve you. I'm humbled by this awesome responsibility. And now, Lord, I pray that you use me as a vessel, if you will, and merchandise your word through me and to me and to these, your people. 
Let your word go forth with boldness and understanding where your name is magnified and glorified. Your people are edified and your kingdom is advanced. This is my prayer. I'm your servant and you're my God. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are all in this together. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, Jesus and his disciples have had a long day. I don't know about you, but after, after you've worked and put in a hard day, after you've worked and even put in a little overtime, after you've worked beyond your normal shift and perhaps you put in a double shift, at the end of a long day, at the end of that day, when you're ready for your evening meal, you're ready to rest. You're ready to relax. At the end of a long day, you're ready to sit in your favorite recliner chair and put your feet up. You're ready to sit back and, and unwind at the end of a long day. This was not the case for the disciples. The disciples were doing ministry. They were performing ministry. Jesus and his disciples in this passage of scripture, they were going from village to village, from town to town. They were preaching the word. They were teaching the people to repent. They were healing the sick. They were delivering the captives and the downtrodden. They were performing ministry. And ministry has no time clock. Ministry is a calling. Ministry is not where you can punch in at 7 o'clock in the morning and punch out at 5 o'clock in the evening. Ministry is 24 hours a day. That was the case for the disciples in Mark's Gospel, chapter 6. There was no rest for the weary. Pay attention to how Mark gives us the time frame throughout the day. He'll say early in the morning, and then he'll say later that day, and then later that night, and then over in the night. Mark is giving us the time frame. And in Mark chapter 6, when you read it at the beginning of Mark's gospel, chapter 6, the day started with Jesus taking his disciples to his hometown. In verse 2, the Bible reads, when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. And they asked, where did this man get these things? He's in his hometown, and they asked, what's this wisdom that has been given to him? What are these remarkable miracles that he is performing? The day started with Jesus teaching the people in his hometown and the people of his hometown started to talk about Jesus. The disciples were there when the people of his own hometown began to diminish Jesus, began to doubt Jesus, began to question Jesus. They asked, where did he get these powers? Who gave him the wisdom that he possesses? How does he perform these miracles? Verse 3 says, isn't that the carpenter's son? Verse 3 says, isn't that Joseph's boy? Isn't that Mary's baby boy? Aren't those his brothers over there, James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Verse 3 says, and they took offense to him. In other words, they're saying, who does he think he is? They took offense to him. Who does he think he is coming here teaching us? This young boy, this young rabbi coming preaching to us. We know you, Jesus. Who do you think you are? We know that you were born in a stable. We know that your parents are poor, Joseph and Mary. They had to uproot and go back to Bethlehem. We know you, Jesus. They didn't have any baby clothes, so you were wrapped in swaddling rags. We know you, Jesus. Who do you think you are? We know you, Jesus. We know that Mary was with you before she married Joseph. Who do you think you are? It says in verse 3, they took offense to him. You're just a carpenter's son. You know people will do that. You, you, you're just this. You're just that. You're not really that, are you? They will diminish you. 
You're just a carpenter, son. They took offense to him. That's how the day started. And it was a long day. The day continued with Jesus going around from village to village. He and his disciples were going around on foot, walking from Samaria to Judea to Nazareth. They were teaching and preaching. Verse 7 tells us that Jesus sent his disciples out two by two to every village, to every hamlet, to preach that the people should repent. He told the disciples to go out two by two to every village and every hamlet and drive out demons. Go to every village and every hamlet and anoint the people with oil. Go to every village and every hamlet and lay hands on the people and heal them. The disciples had a long day of ministry. Verse 8, Jesus tells them, when you go, when you go on your journey, don't take any food with you. He tells them right there in verse 8, when you go on your journey, don't take any money with you. Don't take a bag. Don't even take an extra shirt. You're on a mission. You have work to do. You're not going on vacation. You're not going on a retreat. You're going to preach the gospel. You're going to perform ministry. And then Jesus says, if people receive you, good. Stay there with them for a little while. And then Jesus says, but if they don't receive you, that's good also. Shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. And that's a message for us today. Don't waste your time with people. If people won't receive you, shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. You don't have to get into arguments with people about your faith. You don't have to get into a debate with people about how you believe in Jesus Christ. If they don't receive that, Jesus said, shake the dust off your feet and keep on moving. After carrying out their mission for that day, the disciples returned to Jesus in verse 30. They returned to the master in verse 30. The Bible says the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they have done and taught. Remember now, when they were sent out, they were sent out as disciples, two by two. But now here in verse 30, they are referred to as apostles. Why? Because a disciple is a follower of Jesus. A disciple is a student of Jesus. And an apostle is one who takes what they have learned about Jesus and goes out and spreads the good news about Jesus. The apostles return to him in verse 30. And look at what they say to Jesus when they return. Verse 31 in verse 31, then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Jesus said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. Jesus knows they're tired. Jesus knows they're hungry. He said to them, let's get in the boat and sail to the other side. Jesus says, let's sail to a quiet place and rest. Let's sail to the other side, to the peaceful shore. Let's go and relax. Then the multitude comes. Just when you think you're ready to sit back and relax, just when you think you're ready to call it a day, here comes a large crowd running toward them. A large crowd, the Bible says, is coming from all the towns and all the villages. And the disciples had already had a long day. But there's more work to do. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. They are tired. They're weary. They're ready to go eat. They're ready to go sit down. Verse 35 says, it was late in the day. They're tired. It's been a long day. You know, you do get weary sometimes. You get weary in the work. You don't get weary of the work. You get weary in ministry. You get weary in the work. I have a friend, a fellow pastor, a friend of mine, who a few years ago was officiating a home going. And when the ministers and other pastors gathered in his office to pray and support him, 
I noticed that he was playing music on his stereo in his office, in his study. He was playing Luther Vandross, he was playing the OJs, he was playing some other music. And, and I said, Reverend, that's, that's not gospel music. That's not spiritual music. He looked at me and he said, Reverend, I, 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 I don't want to hear any James Cleveland. I don't want to hear any I stood on the banks right now. I don't want to hear any Shirley Caesar right now. I'm all ministered out. He said, this is my fifth home going this week. I had a home going on Monday. I had two on Tuesday, one yesterday. This was my fifth home going. I don't want to hear any more ministry right now. He was weary in the work, not weary of the work. And I know that feeling every now and then. You just want to get away from the church, from church folks, I should say, not the church. You get weary in the work. The disciples were tired. The disciples say to Jesus, send these people away. But Jesus had compassion on them. And Jesus fed the multitude. You know the story. You know the story of how Jesus fed the multitude with two fish and five barley loaves. John's gospel chapter 6 tells us that it was a little boy's lunch. That it was a lad's lunch that Jesus took into his hands and blessed it and fed 5,000 people. You know the story. You know how Jesus directed the disciples to have the people sit down in groups of 50 and groups of 100 in the grass. Jesus taking the bread and the fish, he blessed it and he broke it and he fed all of them. They all ate and they were all satisfied. You know the story how Jesus told the disciples to gather all the broken pieces, all the scraps, and they had many baskets left over, 12 baskets left over. And the disciples finally got a chance to sit down and eat. The disciples at the end of a long day finally got a chance to eat some fish and some bread, and now they're ready to relax and rest from their work. And that brings us to our scripture this morning. In, in verses 45 through 51, verse 45, after a long day, Jesus immediately made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on the mountainside to pray. Finally, after the crowd is gone, Finally, after the day is done, the disciples must have been saying to themselves, we can finally get away from everybody. We can finally sail to the other side, to that peaceful shore. But sometimes life will give you some long days. Sometimes life will give you some sleepless nights. Sometimes it seems that the day will never end. It seems sometimes in life that the road will never bend. The Bible says after the disciples carried out all that Jesus told them to do, after going from village to village to preach, after going from every village and hamlet to heal the sick, to lay hands on the people, to anoint them with oil, after going all around and feeding the hungry, the Bible says in verse 47, later that night, First, it's early in the day, and then it says later on that day. Now it says later that night. They had a long day. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he, Jesus, was alone on the land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. The King James Version says Jesus saw them toiling. Jesus saw them working hard to keep the boat from sinking don't you know that Jesus sees us down here straining? Don't you know that Jesus sees you toiling? We are down here toiling and Jesus sees us. We're down here taking care of loved ones. We're down here taking care of the sick. We're, we're down here straining and toiling and Jesus sees us. There are people who are afraid to come out of their homes and we're down here buying groceries and, and dropping them off at the front door and, and cases of water at the side door because they don't want to come out. We're down here straining. Jesus sees us. We're down here. Someone lost their job. Someone was furloughed. Someone had to take a pay cut. We're down here straining. 
but Jesus sees us. He sees us. Don't you know that Jesus sees your toiling? He sees your work. He sees you straining at the oars. Jesus put them in that boat. Jesus placed the disciples in that situation. Jesus, he made them get in that boat in verse 45. All of them are in the same boat. God has placed us in this situation. We're all in this together. We're all in the same situation. We're all under the same circumstances. We all are under the same conditions. Think about that. <clears throat> Think about it. All the disciples are in the same boat. All the different personalities are in the same boat. All the different attitudes are, are in the same boat. You know, you can't get two people to agree on anything, but there are 12 disciples in that boat. There are 12 attitudes. There are 12 personalities in that boat. All different vocations are in that boat. All different education levels and skill sets are in that boat. All of the disciples are in the same boat. John is in that boat. John, who Jesus loved, is in the same boat with Judas, who would betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Matthew, the tax collector, is in that boat. He's in the same boat with Simon and Andrew, who are honest fishermen. Peter, who cut off the centurion's ear, is in that boat. Peter, who was quick to pull his knife, is in the same boat with Luke, the physician, the doctor. They're all in the same boat. And in order to keep that boat from sinking, they must all work together. In order to keep that boat from sinking, they are straining at the oars. They are toiling. The Bible says they're straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Jesus put them in that boat to work together. That's where we are today, church. We're all under this pandemic. We're all trying to avoid contracting this virus. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much money you make. We're all in the same situation. It doesn't matter. Your personality doesn't matter. The organizations you belong to don't matter. This virus doesn't care what your education level is. The storm of a virus doesn't care what your vocation is. They don't care. This virus doesn't care how many years you've been on the job that you're a supervisor, that you're a boss, this virus doesn't care where you live. God has put us all in the same situation. Nobody wants this awful virus. This COVID-19 takes your breath away. And it doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're poor, if you can't breathe. It doesn't matter where you live, if you live in a penthouse or in the projects when you can't breathe. It doesn't matter if you brag about your house in the suburbs or whether you live in the city. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you live or sleep in an Egyptian king-sized bed or a single-person cot. It doesn't matter when you can't breathe. It doesn't matter if you make $7 an hour or seven figures a year. This virus is not prejudiced. This virus is no respecter of person. This virus doesn't care if you're single, married, divorced, widow. This virus doesn't care if you're tall or short. This virus doesn't care if you're, if you're bow-legged or not kneed, slew foot or pigeon toe. This virus does not care because we're all in the same situation. And we all must work together. We're in the same boat and we must row together. We can't have some in the boat rowing their oars in one direction and some in the boat using their oars in another direction. We have to work together. I stopped by to tell you today as a preacher of the gospel that we have to wear a mask. We have to wash our hands at every occasion we can. We have to practice social distancing. We have to get the vaccine when it's your turn. We have to work together. 2016, I watched the United States women's rowing team win the Olympic gold medal in rowing because they were all in rhythm and they were all rowing together. In the back of the boat, there's a person known as the swain. 
That person caused the rhythm, the rhythm. That person caused the rhythm of the stroke. You need a rhythm caller in your boat. In the army, we would get up early in the morning. Deacon Hollingsworth, I know you know about it. We would get up early in the morning and run PT. And there was always that one sergeant that would keep the formation in rhythm. There was always that one person that kept the formation in step by calling the cadence. You need a cadence caller on your boat. We need somebody to keep us in line. We need someone to keep us in step. We need somebody to keep us in rhythm. And I stopped by to tell you this morning that that person is Jesus. You can't make it without Jesus. Jesus said in John's gospel, chapter 15, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But then Jesus said, but apart from me, you can do nothing. We can't make it without Jesus. We're all in the same boat. We're all in the same storm and the wind is blowing on all of us. The waves are tossing all of us from side to side and we have to work together. And we need Jesus to keep us in rhythm. I'm almost finished and I wanna close when I tell you down in verse 48, Here's the message. In verse 48, he saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. And shortly before dawn, he went out to them walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them. Don't let Jesus pass you by. Yes, we're in a storm. Yes, we're in a situation. And Jesus is right there waiting for you to invite him into that situation. Don't let Jesus pass you by. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Jesus saw them just like Jesus sees us. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and they were terrified. But Jesus said, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. And then here's the message in verse 51. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. When Jesus is on board, everything is gonna be all right. Yes, we're all in the same situation, but we need Jesus on board. We need Jesus in our boat. If we're gonna make it, we need the Lord to sail with us. We need the Lord in our boat. Jesus should be the captain of your vessel. Jesus should be the captain of your boat. You need Jesus in the boat. There's something about a boat in the Bible. When I close, I wanna tell you that in seminary, they would teach us to pay attention to certain objects in the Bible. They would teach us to pay attention to the spiritual symbolism of certain words and how they're used in the Bible. Words like bread and water, words like trees and mountains and valleys. We know that those simple words have spiritual symbolism because Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the living water. They would teach us not to overlook the simple words Words like mountains and trees, because we know God dwells on the mountain. Moses went up to the mountain. Abraham was up on the mountain with Isaac. Jesus went up to the mountain of transfiguration. These simple words. I stop by to tell you today as I close that boat is a word that you need to pay spiritual attention to in the Bible. There's something spiritual about a boat. Throughout the Bible, God would put his precious cargo in a boat. God told Noah to build an ark that was nothing more than a great big old boat. He said, put two beasts of every kind in that boat. And Noah, put your family and put yourself in that boat. I'll close the doors and when all the floods come, when all the chaos and storms are all around you, you will be safe in that boat. Jesus put them in the boat. There's something spiritual about a boat. Yoshebel, Moses' mother, when she could no longer hide Moses, the record is she made a basket and she lined it with tar and pitch. 
What she did was she really made a boat and she placed Moses down in that little boat and set that boat on the Nile River. Alligators and snakes, scorpions and water moccasins all around, but Moses was safe inside that boat. There's something spiritual about a boat because we're all in the same boat. The apostle Paul, when he was traveling, in Acts chapter 27, when he was on his way to Rome, the record is that he traveled by way of ship. He traveled by way of boat. And a storm came and rocked that boat from side to side. And when the crew wanted to abandon ship, Paul said in Acts 27 and 31, unless you stay with the ship, unless you stay with the boat, you cannot be saved. There's something spiritual about a boat. The church is referred to as a boat. This is the old ship of Zion. There's something about a boat. Jesus started his ministry in a boat. He was walking along the seashore when he met Peter. And he said, Peter, I must use your boat. And Jesus preached his first sermon on the seashore, standing in a boat. Jesus put them all in the same boat. And then Jesus climbed in the boat. We need Jesus in our boat. We need that storm stopper in our boat. We need the captain of our salvation in our boat. We need in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. We need that in the boat. We need the one who had no sin, who became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. We need that in the boat. We need our watchman. We need our redeemer. We need our sustainer in the boat. We need our rock, our rock in a weary land, our rock of ages, our rock of salvation. I don't know about you, but I want that wonderful counselor in my boat. I want that mighty God and that Prince of Peace in my boat. I want the great I am. I want Emmanuel, my mediator in the boat. We need the way. We need the truth and we need the life in our boat. We need the only begotten of the Father, the one full of grace and truth. We need God's only begotten Son. We need the one who made the ultimate sacrifice. We need Jesus in the boat. We need the one who died for my sins, the one who died for your sins, the one who died for the sins of the world. We need Jesus in the boat. We need the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. We need Jesus who died on Calvary. We need Jesus who was buried in a grave. We need Jesus who rose early Sunday morning. We need Jesus. That's the gospel story. We need Jesus took on an old thorny cross on his head, an old rugged cross on his back, a thorny crown on his head, an old rugged cross on his back, went up to Calvary, went up to Via Della Rosa, where he hung, bled, and died. They nailed his hands, they nailed his feet, they hung him high, they stretched him wide. He hung his head and then he died. Didn't he die? I said he died. I said he died. But I'm so glad that he didn't stay dead. They put him down in an old dusty grave. Stayed there all night Friday. All day Saturday. All night Saturday night. But early. I said early. 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 Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. We need that power in our boat. We need redemption power, grace power, mercy power, forgiveness power, salvation power. We need that power in our boat. We're all in this together.
together. We're all in the same boat. And we need Jesus to climb on in the boat. You want to have peace? Have Jesus to ride with you. The Bible says when Jesus climbed into the boat, the winds died down. We need Jesus because we are all in the same situation. We're all in this together. God bless you. God keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The doors of the church are open. On the strength and power of God's word, on the strength of the preach word, as we all here rest to our feet, I offer the invitation to discipleship. Now is the time and this is the place to give your life to Jesus. Man, woman, boy or girl, unchurched, unsaved, uncommitted, now is the time to commit your life to Christ. Won't you come? Won't you give your life to Jesus? We don't want to go without you. To those who are watching by way of social media, I offer that same invitation to you. Since you can't be with us here today, the Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father in heaven, you shall be saved. Won't you make that confession today? And after making that confession, my prayer is that God put a covering on you. My prayer is that God order your steps from this day forward. Make that confession today. And after making that confession, make sure that you get into a good Bible teaching, Bible reading church. We would love to have you here at Christ Baptist Church. But if you can't make it here to 4700 East 7th Avenue, Gary, Indiana, make sure you get under the tutelage of a good Bible teaching church. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Oh, what a mighty good God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Don't let Jesus pass you by. We need Jesus in our daily walk and everything we do, we need the Lord. Now is a time that we set aside for meditation and reflection where our music director plays for us music of meditation where we allow the word of God and the preach word to fill the sanctuary and penetrate hearts. It's meditation time where we can thank God individually and collectively for all that he's done for us, all the blessings that he has bestowed upon us since we were together last. It's meditation time.
it's prayer time. It's time to go to God in prayer. It's time to make our requests known to God so that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's prayer time. We want to make sure that we pray for every church that's open in the name of Jesus, every church that has strained and tried to remain open. We want to make sure that we pray for our children who are going back to school now. The majority of them are going back to school in person, praying for churches that are soon to open back in-person worship. Deacon George Hollingsworth is coming now to render the altar prayer. We want to make sure we pray for our sick and shut-in. I want us to lift up one of our one of our servant members, one of our teachers, retired teacher, Sister Willie Mae Thomas. We affectionately know her as Granny. She was admitted to the hospital this past week. Keep her lifted up and pray that Lord will strengthen her. We want to pray for our our head of our custodial staff, Joshua Wiley, his sister was admitted to hospice care. We want to keep his family lifted up in prayer. We want to pray for Deacon James Martin and his wife, Bobby Martin. And she was admitted to the hospital also this past week. Pray for her strength and pray for his strength. We want to pray for every teacher, every elected official. We want to pray that this vaccine go out and is safe and people get vaccinated. It's prayer time. Deacon George Hollingsworth is here now to render the altar prayer. Let us bow. This morning, our Heavenly Father, I come to you with a bowed head and a humble heart. I come to you because I know you are the great I am. I come to you because you loved us so much you gave us your best. And that was your only begotten son, Jesus, who paid the ultimate price and died for our sins. And you raised him after three days with all power in heaven and earth. And now we have a right to the tree of life. Father, I realize that this pandemic was placed on us for a purpose. Some of us got the message and have returned to you. Others have been turned over to a reprobate mind and gone out wandering. They started worshiping individuals who they Feel is God, and yet they are man with no power. Father, with some have real lives that they have lived a life within the lie. And once they have seen the light, they recognize that you're still God and you're God all by yourself. And Father, we come to you. You heard those prayer requests that the pastor has made. We lift them up. Some of us have experienced being in the hospital. Some of us have experienced loved ones in hospice. Some of us have experienced losing our jobs. Some of us have experienced been put out of our homes because we couldn't pay the bills. But in spite of all of these things, you're still God and you're God all by yourself. And Father, we know that you have made a way for us. In spite of the news where over a half a million in the United States have died from this virus, over two million have died in this entire world. We still put our trust in you. We're walking on faith. We realize that you're God and you're God all by yourself. 
We're coming home, Father. We're coming back to you, recognizing that you are the creator of this heaven and earth. We come to you because you loved us so much you gave your best for us. We come to you because only you can solve the problems that we're facing. We come to you because everything is dependent on you. And Father, I have realized over the years that you have blessed us in spite of us. You have watched over us even when we have fallen. And that's why I can say well, without a doubt, you're God. And I give you the praise, I give you the glory, I give you all the honor because of who you are. And you're worthy of the praise, you're worthy of the glory, and you're worthy of all the honor. We ask now that you touch the bodies and minds of those that need a healing. Give them the word that they need and put it in our hearts to look after those that need you. Let us not be ashamed of the gospel, but be able to tell everybody, every living soul, that they must come to you and repent and believe on your son Jesus and be saved. Father, this is our prayer. And this is our request. We do it in all. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And he alone. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I love you more than anything. I thank God for our music director, Chris Sims. I'm grateful to God for the chairman of the deacon board rendering that prayer. It's offering time. It's time to give and donate your offerings to Christ Baptist Church. We thank God for you and your support of Christ Baptist Church. And I want to say to the members of Christ Baptist, you who support your church, I'm grateful to God for you, and it's not gone unnoticed. On March the 8th, uh, there will be a food pantry giveaway, and then on the weekend of Good Friday, Easter Sunday, there will be another food pantry giveaway where we will be providing food for hundreds of families in the community, and so we thank God for your donations and your offerings those who are watching by way of social media, you'll see on the screen appearing there the variety of ways that you can offer and donate to Christ Baptist Church. We thank God for you. And as I said earlier, not only do we want you to watch us, we want you to follow us. We want you to click the like button and share with your family and your friends the service that, that you watch today. Watch us every Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. Central Time and then share this service with your friends and your family, that the word of God, the preached word, will go throughout the community and throughout the world. We thank you for your donations. We thank you for your offerings. Let us bow now with our offertory prayer. Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you bestowed upon us. And now, Lord, that we have this opportunity to give back 
that a portion of which you've given to us. Help us to understand, Lord, that it all belongs to you. And now, Lord, I pray that you bless both gift and giver. Bless those who have the desire to give. And then, O oh Lord, bless these gifts to be used to your glory. This is our prayer. We're your children and you're our God. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Those who are here in person worship with us today, you have an envelope in your bag there, and you can make that envelope out and make your donations as you dismiss on the way out in the offertory boxes located in the rear of the sanctuary. Let us prepare now for dismissal as we stand for our closing music and benediction. We thank God for allowing us to be here today to worship another Sunday morning. Father, we thank you for all that our eyes have seen, all that our ears have heard, and all that our hearts have felt. We thank you, Lord, for the music ministry. We thank you for the media ministry. We thank you, God, that we have the opportunity to come to your altar and render prayers unto thee. We thank you for the preached word today, and we especially thank you for Jesus. And now as we prepare to go out of this place, but not out of your presence, we pray, O oh God, that you go ahead of us, you go before us, that you make a way for us. And now may the grace of God as Father and as Son and the sweet communion of God as Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in each of these thy people now, henceforth, and forevermore, world without end. And all of God's people can say together, Amen. God bless you. See you next Sunday. Amen. Amen.